In this video, we will continue our discussion on operations on strings. And in this part, we'll again discuss three main string operations, which are the string empty operation, the string size operation, and the comparing of strings. So let's start with the first one, the string empty operation. Now the string empty operation is achieved using the string empty function, which returns a boolean indicating whether the string is empty. So from the name itself, we can understand that this is used to find out whether a string is empty or not. Now when you apply this function on a string, then it would return the boolean 1 if the string is empty and it would return the boolean 0 if the string is not empty. And then we utilize a dot operator to define the object on which we wish to execute the empty function when calling this function. So let us take an example to understand how this is used. So here is a sample code snippet where I have defined a string called readme and using this getLine function inside the while loop, we are reading the input from the user using cin and we are storing the input to this readme string as long as the user supplies input. And then here we have an if condition and here it says not of readme.empty. Now what does this mean? Let us ignore this not for a while and let us just focus on readme.empty. So this is how we make use of the empty function. So readme is the name of the string followed by the dot operator and then we write empty and then this parenthesis. So we are calling this empty function onto this readme and it would return 1 if the string is empty and it would return 0 if the string is not empty, right? Now we are saying not of readme. That means it is going to be the opposite or the inverse of whatever is going to be returned by the empty function. So for example, if we are passing a string that is not empty, let's say that our string actually contains something. Now what would the empty function return? We already said that if the string is not empty, then it would return 0. Now not of 0 would be 1. So inside this if condition we will have 1 which makes the if condition true and then it would come to this part inside the if where we are just printing the string is and then the string that was entered. And then the else condition would just print the string is empty. And when will it come to the else condition? That is when the string is actually empty. Now when the string is empty, what would this function return? It would return 1. And not of 1 will be equal to 0. If there is 0 inside the if condition, then it shows that the if condition doesn't hold and it would come and print this else part. Okay, so let us run this program in Visual Studio Code and see if it is working as expected. So here I have this program called st underscore empty dot cpp where I have written the complete program for that code snippet that we saw in our slide. So let me run this program quickly. Alright, so as I run the program, here we can see the cursor is waiting for the user input. So let me give an input. So I tap hello there and then it says the string is hello there because the string is not empty. So it printed what I entered. Now let's say that I'm entering an empty string. So here you can see the cursor is again waiting for my input. So in this case, I will not enter anything, but I will just press enter. And then you see it says the string is empty because I did not enter anything, right? So it is working as expected. Okay, so now next we come to the next operation, the string size operation. Now from this name itself, we can understand it is to find the size or the length of a string. So the size function returns the length of the string and it returns a string size type value. So when we are trying to get the length of a string, intuitively we may think that the returned value might be an integer type, but that is not the case. What it returns is actually something called the size type, which belongs to the string. So keep this in mind and again we utilize a dot operator to make use of this size function. So let us take an example to see how this works. So here we have a simple code snippet. Here again we have a string called readme and we are reading the string from the user using this while loop and then here I am saying auto len equal to readme dot size. Okay, let's first focus on this part, readme.size. So this is how we call the size function to get the length of the string. So the name of the string, the dot operator, and then the size function followed by the parenthesis. Now this would return the size of the string. And as I already told you, the return value is not an integer, but it is of the size type. And since we are not very sure how to define it, we just make use of the auto keyword here. So if you remember, we already studied about the auto keyword and we know that auto keyword is used to deduce the type from the operation itself. So it would automatically get the type that is returned from this and that type will be assigned to this variable called len and the size would be stored in this len. And then we are just printing out the length of the string is len. Okay, so let me again go to Visual Studio Code and show you the working of this program. 
So here is the complete program for that code snippet and let me run this program. Okay, so the name of the program is sdsize.cpp as you can see here. Now as I have run it, you can see it is waiting for the input from me. So let me enter an input here. So I enter hello and I press enter and it says the length of the string is equal to 5 because it has 5 characters in it. Let me enter another string here and you can see now it says the length of the string is equal to 12. And notice that it also counts the white space which is there in between. That is why the length is set to be 12. Now if I just simply press enter without entering anything, it says the length of the string is 0. So we see that this is working as expected. Now next we come to the next operation that is comparing strings. Now several string comparison operators are defined in the string class and these operate by comparing the string's characters. Now this is a very important line. These operators operate by comparing the string's characters. So when we say we are comparing two strings, we may think that we are actually comparing the length of the strings. But that is not the case. But the strings are actually compared character by character. So we will see examples to make it clear. And also remember these comparisons are case sensitive. So before going to the examples, let us see what are the type of operators that we have. So first of all, we have the equality operators. We can see this is the equality operator that tests the equality of two strings. And this one tests whether the two strings are unequal. Okay, so we will take examples. So we will say that two strings are equal only if they have the same length and the characters in them are exactly the same. All right. Now next, we have the relational operators which evaluates whether one string is greater than the other or greater than or equal to the other or less than or less than or equal to another. All right, so keeping these things in mind, let's take a few examples. So here in this example, I have three sets of strings, one, two and three. So in each set, we are having three strings and we are trying to compare which one is the biggest or the largest one. So let's take this for example. We have three strings S1, S2, S3. S1 is equal to phone. S2 is telephone and S3 is telephone booth. Now take a moment to look at this and think which is the biggest string over here. Okay, so you might have your answer in mind. So let us try to run this in Visual Studio Code and try to actually find out which is the largest string here. So here on VS Code, I have this program called st underscore compare and I have written those same strings here S1, S2, S3, phone, telephone and telephone booth. And here I have written a simple code just to find out which is the largest of the three strings. So basically we are just comparing using the relational operators to find out which among the three strings is the largest one. Okay, let me run the program. Okay, now as I run the program, you can see it says the largest string is the telephone booth, which is S3. All right. Now, this was quite intuitive. We see that this is the longest one and it says it is the largest one. Well and good. Now, let's go to the second example. Now, here we have book, book rack and bookkeeper. Now, again, if you just think of it, we may think that bookkeeper is the longest one because it has the most number of characters. Now, let me run this program. So here I have just changed the strings to book, book rack and bookkeeper. Now let's try to run this. Now in this case, you can see a very strange result. Here it says the largest equal to book rack. So we were expecting it to be bookkeeper, but the largest string it says is the book rack. Now why did this happen? So to understand this, there are two very important points that we need to keep in mind while comparing strings. If the length of two strings differ, and each character in the shorter string is equivalent to its corresponding character in the longer string, the shorter string is shorter than the longer one. Now what this means is that, here as you can see, when I compare book with book rack, you can see all the characters in this book is also contained in book rack in the same positions and then book rack contains four more characters R, A, C, K. So in this kind of cases, when the shorter string is completely there in the longer string, then the shorter one would be the smaller one and the longer one would be the larger one. Well and good. Now the second point tells us that when comparing two strings, the first character at which the strings diverge determines the outcome of the string comparison if any characters at matching places in the two strings differ. Now what does this mean? This means that when we are comparing two strings, let's say that S2 and S3. So when we are comparing S2 and S3, we see that the first four characters B, O, O, K are same for both book rack and bookkeeper. Okay. And then the divergence occurs in this character, in the fifth character. Here we see it is R. 
here we see it is k so this is where the difference or the divergence takes place now here the comparison works in such a way that it would compare these two characters and find out which is the larger character so we know alphabetically r comes after k so r has a greater ascii value than k so it would consider this r to be greater and it would consider this entire string to be greater than this string so that is what happened here since r is greater than k and since this is where the change or the divergence occurred this book rack is considered bigger than the bookkeeper so coming back to our program we can see first of all i am trying to compare s1 and s2 and then whichever is the largest of them that i compared it with s3 so when book and book rack was compared we saw that book rack is the larger one according to point number 1 but when book rack and bookkeeper was compared according to point number 2 book rack is the larger one so that is why book rack is said to be the larger string okay now if that is the case take a look at the third example we have grape grapefruit and gym so think about it take a pause for a while if you want and then try to determine which will be the largest string in this case okay let us run it in visual studio code and find out so here i have grape grapefruit and gym so if you have been following it correctly you must have already guessed it that in this case the largest string is gym right so how did this happen when grape and grapefruit is compared we see that grape is contained exactly inside grapefruit just as it is and this grapefruit has its extra strings fruit so because of that grapefruit is a larger one but when grapefruit and gym is compared we see that g and g they are the same and then the divergence occurs in the second character there is r here there is y here and we know that y comes after r alphabetically so y has a greater value as compared to r so that is why gym would be considered as the larger string in this case so that is why the largest string among these three is gym All right so these two are very important points that we have to keep in mind while comparing strings and it could be a tricky question that you may get to answer in interviews or during your tests so with that we come to the end of this part of the string operations where we discussed about string empty string size and comparing of strings so i hope this lecture was clear to you thank you for watching and see you in the next one